It's post time. On behalf of America's Best Racing, I'm Joe Christofak, and it's time to set our sights on the other side of the pond. The Breeders' Cup World Championships are exactly that. With horses shipping in from all over the world, it is certainly an international event. The majority of American handicappers aren't nearly as familiar with European circuits jockeys, trainers, or horses for that matter, and past performance lines are much different than what we're used to. So how are we supposed to properly evaluate how the Euros stack up against their American competition on Breeders' Cup weekend? Well, a lot more valuable information is provided in the written portion of this blog, but let's take a look at a streamline three things you need to know about European racing. Let's start first with point number one, turf racing rules. Unlike America, where dirt racing is king, overseas the vast majority of races are run on the grass, and no two turf courses are alike. Some have left turns, some have right turns, some race in a straight line for a considerable amount of the distance. And in many cases, there are even uphill and downhill undulations to some of the courses. Now, the average rainfall in Northern Europe is comparable to that of the Pacific Northwest here in America, England, and Ireland. Therefore, a high percentage of the races are contested over yielding or even very soft turf courses. Since all the races are run on grass, the option to move the races to a dirt course when it rains too much, that's not a possibility. Therefore, many Euro races are run, like I mentioned, on soft or very, very soft, even boggy turf. So why would a European lawnmower cross the pond to compete on American soil? Well, a few reasons stand out. Softer competition for the purse money. They prefer firmer ground and or need to run on Lasix, which is prohibited overseas. Point number two, class on grass. Europeans are bred for grass and stamina, therefore the overall quality of their turf racing is much stronger than that here in the U.S. where we breed more for dirt and speed. In the U.S., stakes races are graded, but overseas they are defined as group events. European racing also offers listed stakes and a variety of allowance in maiden races. But don't be confused if a maiden race at a high-profile venue has a sponsor name. It's no different than a quality maiden event run at uh, one of our proper high-class meetings like Saratoga or Keeneland. Racing in different European districts varies in quality. The hierarchy generally begins in the north and works its way down the continent. Ireland, England, France offer the best racing, with Germany, Italy, and Scandinavia holding lesser quality. Point number three, ratings trump times. Because of the variance in courses and condition of the ground, there really is no reliance on the clock in Europe, because it's worthless to try to compare times. There are no speed figures represented in European past performances. Perhaps the best points of comparison are the European ratings, provided by such services as the Racing Post, Timeform US, and Globeform. Much like traditional US speed figures, the higher the ratings, the better. These ratings are very subjective and are considered to be a weight assignment, not a calculation of how fast the horse ran. They can, however, give a handicapper the best indication as to how strong a particular horse is compared to their overseas peers. Now, the information may be slightly different, but the key to picking winners in any country is really quite simple. In evaluating the chances of each individual, you must measure the strength of the competition they have faced and determine what kind of race they will run under the conditions in which they are entered for today. Live it. Love it. Play it, share it, and when it comes to handicapping Europeans, make sure you research it before you bet on it at AmericasBestRacing.net.